of the National Academies, which is which is the organization in Washington that that Congress has charged with the responsibility of explaining to Congress what technical issues are about. Okay, that's their job, and they had not differentiated the rare earths into into how they were used in any, in any way. Uh, now they issued a report in 2008. They they cited the rare earths as critical materials. Fine. But that was undifferentiated. Now here we are, 26 months later, the Department of Energy issues a report just as long as, as, the, as the original uh, critical materials for the, for the 21st century by the National Academies, only this one has great details about rare earths and selects dysprosium as the most critical material uh, required by for the United States in a strategic way. So, once the the term critical is being used, uh, this is I think the first conference I've ever seen where critical metals a public conference was a title, and I, I'm going to be um, chairing a session at a at an academic conference in California Institute of Technology in um, April, and. They've, they've asked me to, it's, it's called uh, Materials for Sustainable Energy. It's sponsored by uh, the Resnick Institute at California Institute of Technology. And they want me to set the theme for the conference by identifying what materials are important for, for the future of altered energy, sustainable energy, etc. Well, I think I'm going to lead off with dysprosium, to be honest with you.